I want to take a moment here just in case you tuned in. This is The Watchful Citizen. I'm the host, Josh Kramer, of today's show. I have with me uh, Leroy Stokes from the NAACP Lincoln Chapter. He is the president. And I have Patty Newman, who is an active citizen in our community. And we are talking about affirmative action and concerns about a recent uh, attempt to put something on a ballot here in Nebraska to get rid of affirmative action. I want to talk a little bit about this campaign. And I don't know who wants to approach this first, but uh, who is this Connolly person, why are there outsiders coming into our state? I think that's important for people to understand. This is not a homegrown movement against affirmative action. This is somebody from outside our state bringing a national campaign. Who are these people and what is their, what are they doing? You want me to take, take it? Take um, Ward Connolly was a board, board of regent uh, for the University of California system. Um, he's a self-made, I, I assume, millionaire who um, has done well for himself. But he decided that uh, he did not like affirmative action in what he was seeing in, in California. Now, I would say California is not Nebraska. Um, uh, that would be straight out. But he did, he was successful in getting um, this ballot initiative out in California passed. Um, he then was going to go to a couple other states. It has passed since in Michigan. Um, he was going to try and get it on the ballot in Florida. But Jeb Bush, who was governor down there, decided by executive order he would, he would basically uh, do the same thing so it did not go on the ballot. So he um, made some changes in Florida law. Now there are five states that they are targeting. That's Arizona, Colorado, Missouri, Oklahoma, and Nebraska. Um, it seems that there are some uh, big industrialists who are supporting this movement. I don't know whether that has anything to do with uh, public contracts, but that would be my suspicion. Um, uh, but here in Nebraska, there will need to be 115,000 signatures uh, collected by July 4th to get this on the ballot in November. Have you seen uh, people running around with their signature sheets yet? I don't, I haven't been down to the DMV, and that's normally where they nail you here, but <laughs> uh, uh, it will be coming. They have they have started a group called the Nebraska Civil Rights Initiative, I believe, mm -hmm. and uh, there is a movement afoot now. Leroy, how about you? Have you come across anybody out in the community trying to get folks to sign a petition yet? I have not personally, but I know people who have been contacted, and in their opinion, in my opinion, the way they described it to me, is very deceptive. They will ask a series of questions uh, to ask the negative to sound positive. And then when asked, do you believe in uh, affirmative action, most of those persons have said, yes, I do. But they ask you point blank questions in a, fear, in a position to make you fear of losing your job. And affirmative action does not cause people to lose their job. Qualified people are still going to get jobs, going to get the jobs. And that's the biggest thing that I see and have heard, that putting fear of phobia in people, uh, making them think that they aren't going to get a job they deserve or they're going to lose a job they already have. But that's not the case with affirmative action. It should not be the case with affirmative action. Let's talk a little bit about something that I've heard you talk about before, and that is uh, uh, opening up contracts for public entities to minority contractors. Um, wh why would there be? Why would people be opposed to that idea? Making sure that that uh, you know contracts were offered to businesses that were owned by by minority people, in addition to businesses that are not owned by minority people. You know, certainly here in Lincoln, there should not be an issue because many of the businesses, there are only, I think, two or three uh, that I'm aware of, uh, businesses headed by females here. And based upon the research that we did to try to contact minority businesses uh, racially, on a racial basis, uh, we only found one or two minority businesses, one Hispanic and, and uh, one African-American business. So there's not a large group of people out there competing for these jobs. And can, at the same time, these businesses are so large, the kinds of money that, that uh, comes out on bid, they can't afford the bonding to uh, actually compete for the larger jobs. So they're still looking at the crumbs from the table, generally speaking, on a, uh, asking for uh, having participation in these contracts. Again, it goes back to fear. These small businesses and organizations and groups are going to take over my business, but they simply aren't large enough for that to happen. And as we look toward leveling the playing fields, there needs to be some mechanism in place to allow those small businesses to apply and be
competitive in these smaller contracts. I say smaller, the larger one as well, but the businesses are generally speaking not large enough to apply for these $250 million contracts because of the bonding issues in part. What is this fear based on, Leroy? Do people really think that they're going to lose their job because of affirmative action? Again, this is simply my opinion. I think uh, one is greed. Uh, people don't want to give up anything that they already have, regardless of how small it is. And I say some people in groups and organizations. And others is that, uh, well, perhaps I don't want to see other people uh, succeed in, in the uh, corporate world, as a corporate world, as well as I have. So some of it is competition, just strict, pure competition. This is simply my opinion. And again, agreed. You don't think racism uh, might be underneath this and showing its face in this fear? Racism and sexism is always ever present. And when I'm speaking of fear and greed, uh, those fall right in that category. Um, statistically, uh, there are more women in the workforce, as Pat has already mentioned before. There are more wives in the workforce. There are more mothers in the workforce. And that's leading to uh, opportunities for more uh, family uh, economic building in their homes. As we look at our little daughters, the, qu the question we're asked, uh, would you want your son or daughter, in this case I use a daughter, to be the president of the University of Nebraska, a president of a major university? The answer would likely be yes. And uh, do you believe in affirmative action? Someone may say no. And those are kind of tricks that this uh, questionnaire is being placed around. Everyone wants to see equal opportunities of qualified people. I think the fear is that they will take over individual jobs. 